to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. It's Ebro, Laura Rosenberg. Good morning. We wanted to do a quick check-in uh, with State Senator Parker. How you doing, sir? Representing Flatbush, Brooklyn. How are you? Absolutely. I'm great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it, you know, it's a, a great day uh, for us to talk about what's happening in our city and our state. Yeah, we uh, just uh, just the other day over in Brooklyn, Sunset Park, uh, a man uh, decided he wanted to create some terror, uh, shot several people, opened fire on a train during rush hour, uh, released some uh, smoke bombs, had some fireworks. Um, his, he has been apprehended. Um, and, you know, there'll be more on that. But we wanted to bring on State Senator Parker because the ghost gun problem and the gun problem in New York City continues to be a hot topic. Welcome to the program, uh, State Senator Parker. What did you want to uh, enlighten the city about? Well, first of all, we really have to get the violence problem under control. It's not just a matter of guns, but it's a violence problem overall. And we have to start engaging people on that level and not just think if we magically take guns out of everybody's hands that all of a sudden we're going to be safe. Um, I think the mayor has the right focus. I think that um, we're not going to adjudicate ourselves out of this problem, though. We're coming out of a pandemic that has threatened both our lives and our livelihoods and really has taken a toll on a lot of people's mental health. Uh, clearly, when you mm -hmm. see something that happened the way the way it did the other day, it's not just a criminal act and a horrific criminal act. And we certainly keep our thoughts and our prayers with the victims um, of that shooting. Um, but we also understand that um, there's a lot of mental health needs that we need to, to address in this, in this city and simply putting more cops on the scene, um, I think is part of the solution, but certainly not the main part of it. Um, we've already banned ghost guns. I actually passed the ghost gun legislation that banned ghost guns in the state of New York, um, back in 2019. Um, but I still have legislation out there that would create an emergency mental health unit. Think about an ambulance for people with mental health problems. We really start need to start to address um, people are homeless, people have drug and alcohol problems, people have mental health problems in a way that's more compassionate and more um, directly addresses their issues and not simply just uh, lock them up. So, uh, State Senator Parker, do you believe um, our state, New York State, and specifically New York City, um, these uh, measures you're speaking of are responses uh, to problems, which we need to have that. What, what are our proactive programs? Mm -hmm. to where we are able to help young people. And I'm to, when I say young people, I'm not even talking about teenagers. I'm talking about 8, 9, 10, 11 years old mm -hmm. who are living in the city that are living in and around the, the trauma, the chaos, the over-policing, the violence, the poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people who are the most vulnerable, the most susceptible to developing emotional and mental issues later on. What are our preventative programs? Right. So look, I think that you've hit it right in the head. We don't do enough. And we really have to start with the schools. We need to add more music, art, athletics, and dance as regular parts of the curriculum. We need to expand school-based athletics and engage young people in real ways and get more um, adults engaging with, with young people in, in activities that are important. And now that we have universal pre-K, we now need to have universal after school. And I, and I really favor our Beacon School model um, created, um, you know, in, in the 90s. Uh, and we, you know, this is a, a thing that really makes schools not just community centers, but family centers, places where not just kids can get help with homework and karate and dance class, um, but where parents can come in and maybe get counseling for themselves, maybe group counseling. Maybe there can be job training and coding and things in English as a second language for people who need it um, across our great city. Every single school in the city of New York should have the after school program. And that's how we should proactively be engaging our, our young people. But in addition what's to that, being said, what, what's being said about these ideas, where yeah. are we at with this? Well, people, people don't want to, people don't want to fund them. I mean, we're, we're more, you know, we want, we're more likely to put money into, into prisons and to schools uh, than schools. Right. And so we want to fund police, um, but we don't want to fund projects that to, to help engage our, our young people. I mean, I have another piece of legislation around, um, trauma-informed care in our schools. And we've had a really hard time trying to get this, this issue raised in Albany um, because people don't want to address the trauma that, that exactly that you're talking about. Um, and we need people both on the school level, the district level, and the city and state level who are looking at trauma um, in individual kids um, at the school level. 
Now, you, uh, Mayor Adams seems open to some of the things. I've watched him speak. I've watched him talk about summer programs for kids. I've watched him talk about expanding summer programs for kids. A lot of he's he's put a lot of uh, emphasis on school and thinking about education differently, thinking about health mm -hmm. and food differently. Like I see him saying these things. Mm -hmm. uh, and does does it feel like he's going in the right path? It's just at the state level. We have a funding problem getting that down to the impoverished areas. No, look, I, I congratulate the mayor. Um, you know, me and Eric Adams have worked together for a very long time. I, when he was in the state Senate, we, our office, were, uh, our districts were adjoining. We sat next to each other on the floor. I'm very proud of what he's doing. And like I said, I think he has the right emphasis. I think what he's doing with um, summer youth employment is absolutely critical. But now that we're giving young people jobs, we now also need to give adults jobs. And really in black and Latino communities, we really can't sit around and wait for Amazon or Wall Street or some other white company to come and save us. We really need black, black and Latino entrepreneurship on Main Street, not Wall Street. And so we need to put people in position where they can get access to capital, they can get technical assistance to run their businesses, and they can get contracts through women and minority business enterprise programs, right? Those, those are really the keys um, to, to creating a um, empowered community where people have both the economics and the means uh, to address their, their issues in their own communities. Uh, State Senator Parker, you represent and, and the, the voters in the Flatbush area. How long have you been on that job? Yes, I had the, the pleasure of representing the 21st district in Brooklyn, which is part of Canarsie and part of Flatlands, but principally Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, Dittmas Park, Windsor Terrace, and Park Slope uh, for 19 years now. Um, I'm the chairman of the Energy and Telecommunications Committee, still dealing with things like broadband and climate change uh, you know, across our great state, um, but also the majority whip. And so dealing with the issue of uh, what we call democratic uh, <laughs> discipline, which is an oxymoron, as you know. Tell us, uh, no, tell us why democratic discipline's an oxymoron. I would love to hear more about it. <laughs> because because trying to get Democrats to move in one in one direction is like herding cats, right? We, we're a big tent. We're not like Republicans. Republicans are a bunch of old white guys from suburbs and rural areas. We have people in our in our um, conference who represent, you know, suburbs, exurbs, you know, rural areas, urban areas. We have women. We have we have you know, men, gay, we have black, white, Latino, and Latino across the spectrum. We have everything from Puerto Ricans to people from El Salvador. You know, we have Asians and that, and every, you know, uh, and everybody who was from India to Thailand, um, you know, being represented in our state legislature. So when you look at- So you're Democrats, saying it's more diverse, the issues are more, 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 more diverse more, and, and it's- more. Yeah, it's right, not even- It's close. more complicated. Right. And so getting those folks to kind of move in one direction, um, you know, is a challenge, um, but we've gotten it done and we've done great things for the state. Uh, including protecting the women's right to choose, making permanent, um, you know, rent rent regulations. We have done in our last budget universal daycare uh, to provide more daycare options uh, for communities. We've made voting um, more accessible to people. As uh, the chair of the committee says, we've gone from worst to first in terms of voting in in the state of, state of New York. And so, um, you know, I'm very proud of the work that we've done, but there's still so much to do. Again, coming out of this pandemic. It would seem, though, that it would be easy to get everybody to understand that the, the emotional intelligence and the mental health and the stability, specifically of some of the more violent offenders in our society that tend to be men, right, mm -hmm. uh, would get everyone on the same page of understanding that we need to be proactive about dealing with the mental health issues that are plaguing not only people who are homeless, but people who are just suffering with emotional instability. It feels like getting people on that page and focusing on that and doing more preventative work would be an easy task. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, a lot of times we're conflating what's happening in the city right now as it relates to violence and it relates to crime. We have two separate problems, right? We have a mental health problem. We have a number of people who are deinstitutionalized de during um, the pandemic in the search for find more beds, right? And so at the same time that that was happening, people were losing their jobs. And so you have a set of people who are out here looking to chase cheddar because they lost their gigs, their family and sometimes has lost the, the main breadwinner because they died of COVID. And so they're out here trying to figure out, you know, and those stimmy checks are done, right? And so how are people making it day to day in this moment, right? And then connected to that, we have all these people who've been deinstitutionalized de and are now on the streets. And how do we, in a humane way, 
bring those folks back in literally from the cold and start addressing their needs one at a time because you know obviously all their needs are going to be very different and creating a, a, a superstructure um, that in a compassionate way embraces them, lets them know that society is going to take care of them um, and, and understanding um, that we have to protect people from crime and protect people from violence while simultaneously caring for the, the vulnerable people in our communities. State Senator Kevin Parker, thank you for your time today. Anything else you want to say to your constituency and the listeners uh, as we take this moment to try to, you know, uh, deal with the, um, the the shooting that just took place, the trauma uh, and the chaos of, of, of just last Tuesday? Yeah. First of all, again, I want to just um, send my prayers and my thoughts to the victims and their families um, of people who were affected, not just folks who were shot, um, obviously them, but also people who, you know, again, as you were saying, were traumatized by being in proximity to, to that to that violence. Um, but in addition, you want people to know that there are resources out there on the state and the city level. Um, elected officials throughout the city are, are available for you if you don't know where to go. Um, people can feel free to reach out to me, Senator Kevin Parker, on any um, social media, whether it's you know Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and my office will certainly um, be happy. I actually have a licensed certified social worker on my staff exactly for these kind of moments. And we're happy to help direct resources to people and, and, and connect people to the caring that they need and the empathy um, from a government that is that is set up for this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Take Thank you, care. Senator. Keep yep. doing the work. Yes, sir.